on today's show. and straight stitch. We're in stitches at Lima Vida Sewing and Design. For many students, the learning continues after the school bell rings. Today we meet with youth who are learning about the world of sewing. I joined the youth class because I really like design and this class is sort of like taking a design to the next level, creating your own fashion line, and that's something I really want to do, and being able to display it at Vancouver Kids Fashion Week has been one of my goals and dreams. This class can be for any type of sewer, even if you haven't done it before. I didn't know how to sew when I started, and it's still really fun. There's a lot of freedom with like choosing your fabrics, and they, the teachers help you a lot, and everyone is really nice here. La Movida is a uh, sewing and design studio um, that's been here for five years. We teach uh, kids eight and up as well as adults. So we have youth classes, teen classes, and adult classes. We learned that there's a lot to learn about sewing. They learn about choosing fabrics that are appropriate for the design that they want. They learn as much as we can teach them about different kinds of fabric, fabric content, how different fabrics wear. Is this yeah, like t-shirt fabric? Then they learn how to um, uh, design or draft a pattern or alter a pattern. They cut their own fabric out, so they learn about pattern layout and how that pattern will go down on the fabric and which way it goes and how it best how it best works on the fabric that they've chosen. They'll cut their patterns out or they'll cut their fabrics out. Um, they'll learn seam finishing, so that's how to finish the edges of the seam so that when they put their garment together it doesn't fall apart. They'll learn how to sew it together and all the techniques that that takes to sew it together. They may learn how to put a zipper in as they are doing in the pullover class, they're doing a zipper up front. They'll learn how to put pockets in, uh, we put rivets in, they made casings, they know, learn how to measure and put an elastic in so that their pants don't fall down. So they learn all aspects of trying to put together. And then they learn when they put it on, you know, the importance of good sewing or cautious practice, like uh, careful practice of sewing, so that their garments turn out lovely and that they fit and that they look good. The classes at La Movida are very welcoming to new students. If you're a beginner, there's no need to worry. I was, like, I was a beginner and they helped me through everything. And it's awesome what you can do in this class. You don't have to have any experience, you don't have to have sewn before, you can hop right into a class, we give you a learn to sew, um, and you can start right away cutting, sewing, and making an outfit or making clothing right away. We did not realize there were so many different skills involved in sewing, including math. It gives them an opportunity to learn how, even if they don't pursue a, a career in fashion, to sew a button on, to repair their clothes, to hem their pants, um, and maybe they might be able to do some customization or they might you know, find something in a store and they're like, I like this, but I want to change it up a little bit so that they can upcycle their clothes or customize their clothes. We have to do a little bit of math sometimes um, and construction and deconstruction of thinking of something. Students will come in with a garment that they want to copy. They say, I want to copy this. And so what we have to do is we have to think about how to deconstruct something and then how to reconstruct it and put it back together. And I think those are awesome skills to know. I'm learning how to put together a fashion line that makes sense and how to put together garments and do more complex stitches. I really enjoy just sewing in general and creating my own fashion lines let out my creativity and all the ideas I have and meeting new people and finding out what they like. Will you be proud of the clothes you make? Yeah, they usually turn out really nice. Sometimes I make a lot of mistakes, but I think it's really good that I made it and I'm usually quite proud of myself. I love to sew every day. I have sewn since I was eight years old, as well as many of the students that are here. When they walk into the studio, they're like, I'm home. This is like, this is it for me. I just absolutely love it. It's not offered very many places, and so it hurts me to think that someone could have a great natural ability or a, you know, have an affinity for clothing or making or sewing, and they don't have the opportunity to explore that. So I'm super happy that we're here and that if you have that sort of inclination that 
that you can come and sail with us. We want to thank everyone at Lamo Vida for talking to us. And if you want to find out more information about their awesome classes, go to their website below. This is Isabel signing out for Gen Y. Many teens want to make a difference, and today we meet Brady, one of the founders of Weekend Fuel Bag. Weekend Fuel Bag was a program that I developed with my two cousins. We had a friend who was going home every weekend to only eat one cliff bar a day. I mean, no breakfast, no lunch, no dinner, it was just a cliff bar. And I mean, everybody knows that you can't survive off so little food. So we decided, instead of just simply feeding our friend out of our pantry and, you know, out of our fridge, there was more we could do. After a small, simple Google search for about five minutes, we found out that in BC, child poverty is a huge problem. About 20% of kids are affected. 200,000 children, students, across British Columbia are living in poverty. So this isn't just a small problem that our one friend was going through. This was a huge problem that affects all of us. The process behind Weekend Fuel Bag is a true team and community effort. Because the schools give breakfast and lunch, the niche that we could fill was the weekends and the holidays. So every single week we put an order into the Save On Foods uh, in our local Walnut Grove area and they deliver this big amount of unpacked food to each of the individual schools that we help. You know, because we want to ensure that this program continues and it's sustainable, we've developed a youth for youth program. Youth come together and once the food is delivered from Save On, they pack it into bags, give it to the counselors or the administrators, and then on Fridays, the students who are living in need, living in low-income situations, come, pick that up, and take it home. Who is Weekend Fuel Bag for? Weekend Fuel Bag is for the local students. You know, the kids who are suffering through these problems in our own neighborhoods. I mean, most people think of poverty as the downtown east side of Vancouver or overseas, but it exists in every single community. I mean, just because you can't see it doesn't mean it's not there. There is no doubt that Weekend Fuel Bag has made an amazing impact. We really want to do two things with We Can Feel Bag. We want to help people in need, break that cycle of poverty, uh, and food is a great way to start that. It helps with education, helps with health, both mental and physical, and so many other aspects of poverty. But we also want to inspire people. We want to, we want to inspire youth to show them how much power they have. I mean, so many people donate to We Can Feel Bag because of the youth involvement in the program and because it's youth that created it. And youth are 20% of the population, but 100% of the future. The earlier on you realize how much power you have and how much we can do, the better the world will be in the future. Brady had an inspiring message for teens who want to make a difference. Every single person out there wants you to succeed when you're helping other people. So if you have a dream, if you have an idea that will help lots of people and eliminate any problem that exists in the world, everyone will get behind you and make sure you succeed. So if you don't have the time, if you don't have the money, if you don't have the resources or the knowledge, those are all restraints you're putting on yourself. Somebody else has the knowledge, somebody else has the time, somebody else has the money. Everything can get done as long as you ask the right questions and just keep talking about what you want to do. Brady is personally very passionate about creating awareness about poverty and its impact. If every single person in BC, if every single person in Canada knew about what children were going through, knew about you know, the abuse that exists, knew about the drugs, knew about you know, the inequality. If every single person knew, every single person would act on it. And poverty would not exist. If you want to get involved with Weekend Field Bag, go to our site, uh, weekendfieldbag.ca, or visit our Instagram, Facebook, or Twitter page at Weekend Field Bag and learn about what we're doing and learn how to volunteer uh, as well as donate food and money. That was so inspiring and it makes me want to make a difference too. The Salissa, signing out for Gen Y. After the break, Gen Y will be right back. Kids. Ten thousand kids. We are brave. We are strong. We are fighters. Some days are good. Some days are bad. Some of us make it. Some of us don't. My wish will make me strong. 
The Children's Wish Foundation of Canada. Does a wish make a difference? You bet. You bet. Imagine the difference a wish can make. On my tell my needles tell my wish. Please give today. Welcome back to Gen Y. The Nutcracker is definitely a winter favorite. And we're here to have a behind the scenes look at Royal City Youth Ballet's spectacular production. I really love the magic of the whole ballet, the fact that the audience gets so involved with it and there's just so much to it that makes the show kind of come to life on stage. the challenge of it because I'm Sugar Plum is takes a certain type of dancer like usually really soft and I am not a soft dancer I dance like very like sharp I guess you could say dancers all have memorable and favorite scenes my favorite scene is probably um, fighting with Mouse King during fight scene uh, because it's just really funny and uh, yeah, it's an enjoyable scene. I think my favorite scene is probably the Land of Sweets because I get to dance at the Sugar Plum Ferry and I get to watch all the other dances. People tell me your productions are always so professional. Why is that? Well, that's what we aim to teach the students. We aim for it to be a professional production, as professional as possible, so that the dancers get a taste of what might happen later in their life if they pursue this as a career. But also, it's just a great way to learn about a work ethic that gets you to something that is a goal. We are a nonprofit organization that was started to allow many different schools from the Lower Mainland to be able to cooperatively put on this amazing production. We audition children from any school that would like to send their students that's willing to have them participate. The Nutcracker is a very diverse story. We have the Spanish dance. We have the Chinese dance. We have the Arabian dance. We had a choreographer, a Chinese dance choreographer, come in and do our Chinese dance. We had a Russian dance choreographer come and do our Russian dance. So these things are, are really make it so that somebody, anybody, everybody can identify with something within our ballet. Ballet is something that will help you in life, not just on the stage. Ballet has definitely taught me time management, so I dance so much and I go to school like half the time, but like managing things can get a little bit stressful, but um, ballet has taught me so many different ways to handle that, I guess. Ballet has taught me discipline as well as dedication and never to give up when you're trying something new. Ballet has also taught me a lot of perseverance and determination and always kind of pushing myself and always trying to be better, constantly improving and I think that's translated into other parts of my life too, just um, always working hard and uh, keeping motivated and really determined. It's such an amazing way to learn discipline, how to express yourself, perseverance, dedication, and you meet some amazing people. I have friends that I have been friends with because of ballet for 40 years. Make sure to catch the Nutcracker this year before it finishes. But if you don't, you can go to RoyalCityYouthBallet.org to find out what else they're doing. This is Isabel signing out for Gen Y.
in foster care, I was taught that I'd been saved from drugs and prostitution, but their teachings and navigation were only an invasion. As if being taken away from my family was the solution. So I came to the conclusion that my family was pollution. I was treated like my pain wasn't real. No big deal. It shouldn't be so hard to heal. If you carry intergenerational pain, your children are for theirs to steal. Smudging clarifies my thoughts. It's like healing. The smoke goes up to her ancestors. It refreshes and brings in our relations. It makes me feel connected with the outside world where our culture lives. It's cleansing, a process of renewal. My negativity is released. I feel like it puts me back in time, like I'm sitting with my ancestors. I feel grateful to preserve our culture through ceremony. Yeah. When I know who I am, when my mission is clear and I burn with the inner fire of unbreakable will, no cold can touch my heart, no deluge can dampen my purpose. I know that I am alive. Do you mind if I chill? Are you even a girl? Oh. You guys need an extra body? We don't want a girl on the team. talking about it. Yeah. Actually, I'm feeling kind of thirsty. You want to go to the cafeteria and get some tea? Yeah, let's do it. <laughs> that was some wild story. I couldn't believe that happened. I watched it all go down too, right? Yeah. Oh my god, I have this big history test I have to study for. Really? Yeah. Hey, do you mind if we join you? Uh, sure. I brought you some water. Oh, thanks. What are your pronouns? Now I know my true identity.
after the break. Gen Y will be right back. Kids help phone. Hi. Can I talk to someone? Sure. You can talk with me. Okay. It's okay. Take your time. I want to kill myself. Okay. I'm really glad you called. Are you in a position to hurt yourself right now? Yes. Okay. Why don't you talk to me about how you're feeling? And I'll just listen. Okay. Dear Children's Wish Foundation of Canada, Thank you for sending me Rory the Lion. That means I'm going to get my wish, and that makes me really, really happy. Yesterday he was sad, but I told him, it's okay, Rory, but only two more needles until my wish. I will send you pictures from the top of the Rocky Mountains. Love, Emily. Imagine the difference a wish can make. Click on childrenswish.ca and give today. Welcome back to Gen Y. Do not judge by appearances. A rich heart may be under a poor coat, which I thought applies exactly to what I'm trying to do. For many, the downtown east side is not an area they want to venture into. But today we meet an extraordinary teen who chooses to meet and learn the stories of those living in Canada's poorest postal code. What is the Vancouver Care Project? The Vancouver Care Project is a blog that I run where I interview different people who live, work, and volunteer on the downtown east side, and I share their stories on my platforms to try and raise awareness to the area and to end the stigma that I find surrounds it as well. And this is a really good friend of mine now. Um, when I wrote his story, he told me he wanted to be called child number 46, because that is what they referred to him as in the residential school. He didn't want to be in the photo himself, but so instead we put his hat that he wears to the soup kitchen every Thursday morning in there instead. We were curious to learn about Rachel's reasons for starting her blog. I started to volunteer on the downtown east side and I went on Good Shepherd ministry walks and to different soup kitchens and as I started to meet these people and hear their stories I was really inspired by them and realized that they were very misunderstood so I wanted to be able to share their stories and provide some dignity to the area and promote respect around it as well. Rachel shared what she hopes this project will do for others. I think my goal with this project is definitely awareness. Um, I'd like more people my age, older, younger, everybody in Vancouver to have a better understanding of the downtown east side, the community that it is, the people that are down there. You know, these people that I talk to is somebody's brother, somebody's sister, mom, dad, you know, and you never know the card that someone's been dealt. So I think that it addresses the stigma because it sh um, shares the stories and allows us to kind of look at them and think, wow, I never looked at that person that way. I looked at them as, you know, being a drug addict or being just somebody that was homeless. I didn't see the story behind the person. We were curious about how Rachel finds her stories for the blog. I know how to approach people by some main signs, which is usually body language. If somebody's looking down, if they're kind of punched over, if they're sleeping, um, anything like that, then I know that they're probably not in the best mood or mindset and they're not going to want to talk about their stories and be vulnerable. And I usually try to respect that and give them some space. Um, people that are panhandling as well, I usually don't approach them because I've realized that that is their source of income. That's probably their food for the week. And that would be like me going up to somebody that's working and saying, hey, can you stop exactly what you're doing and talk to me, please? So I just don't want to do that to someone. Do you ever feel unsafe? I mean, I've been asked that question a lot, um, and I don't think I've ever felt unsafe. While I've been on the downtown east side, I find that the people of the area are very welcoming and they're very kind. Um, usually when I'm walking, especially kind of in like the deep depths of the downtown east side, um, people will call out like girl on the block, student on the block, and people will put away things that they probably shouldn't be doing or they'll watch their language and things like that. They're very respectful and I've never been approached in an uncomfortable manner or anything like that. 
Do you have a message to other teens who want to do something that inspires them? Yeah, I mean, I think when I was younger, I was always told to use your gifts and your talents to make an impact in the world around you. And I always thought to myself, you know, I can't sing, I can't dance, I'm not a very good cook, I'm not the most popular. But it became evident to me that I really care about other people and I love storytelling. And so I put my two gifts to something that can help make an impact in the world around me. So even if, you know, you can't, you don't think that there's something that you can do, there's always some small impact that you can make on the world and that even one life changed is a difference. If you want to read more of Rachel's amazing, inspiring stories, go to her website, vancareproject.ca. I'm Isabel, signing out for Gen Y. is brought to you by Options Community Services.